Today, we're going to take this profile card and add a 3D rotation animation and light sheen effect using firmer motion. To follow along, you can grab the starter code in the description. With that, let's jump in. All right, so to start, I have this profile card with an image and some text. For this, I took some inspiration from the Arc Browser member card. This card is defined by this div up here on the page, and all of the content is in this separate card content component down here. First, let's get this card to rotate in 3D when we hover over it. For this, we're going to need to track our cursor on the screen. So we're going to use the on mouse move event to track our cursor. So on mouse move, and we'll pass in a function called handle mouse move, which will create. Create up here, handle mouse move. This will be of type mouse event handler. Take the event. In this handler function, we're going to need to get the current location of the cursor. Now we're going to use this in another place in a little bit. So I'm just going to do this in a separate function up here. So we'll call it get mouse position. This will take a react mouse event. And we'll pass in the element and mouse event types. So we're going to first grab the width, height, left and top position of the events, current target, and the bounding rect. So this will give us the information for this div that's surrounding the card. Now, by default, this left and top is relative to the top left of the screen. And what we actually want here is the position of the cursor relative to the top left of the card. So we're going to do a bit of a transformation here. So we're going to say current mouse x is e.clientx minus left. So e.clientx is the current position of the cursor relative to the top left. And we're going to shift essentially the coordinate axis to make it such that when we're at the top left of the card, this is zero. We'll do similar for the y position as well, e.client y minus top. And I'm just going to return out here an object with this new x and y position. And then also container width, which will be the width of the card, and then container height for the height. Okay, now let's use this new function down here. So we're going to say current mouse x, current mouse y, the container width, and the container height will all be get mouse position and we'll pass in the event. Next, I'm going to convert this mouse position to a percentage value where if we're on the left, it should be minus 50%. And if we're on the right, it should be positive 50%. And then similar for the top and the bottom. This would just be easier to map to rotation values. So down here, let's do this conversion. So we'll call first X percent, and we'll say this is the current mouse X position divided by the container width. So this will give us a percentage from zero to one, and then we'll shift it by negative 0.5 to make it from negative 50 to positive 50%. We'll do the same thing for the Y position as well. So Y percent using the current mouse Y and the container height. We then need to convert this percentage into a rotation value, which we can pass into the card. So for this, we're going to use the use transform hook from Framer Motion to help us do this. Now to pass these values into the use transform hook, they need to be motion values. So I'm just going to quickly refactor some of this. So here at the top, I'm going to create these variables as motion values. So I'll say use motion value and initially it can be just value zero and same for the Y percent. And then down here, instead of setting it like this, I'll say x percent dot set, and we'll set it to the same value. And then same for the y percent as well. Let's just copy this. Y percent, pass it in. And up here, let's do the transformation. So first I'll make a rotate x value. So so we'll use use the transform from from motion. We'll pass in y percent, which will have a value from negative 0.5 to 0.5. And we want to map this to a specific rotation value. Now, let's say we want to go from negative 15 degrees to positive 15 degrees. Now, this might be a little bit counterintuitive to use the Y percent for X rotation. But if you think about it, the Y percent is our position on the top and the bottom. And this rotate X is relative to the rotation along the X axis, which is an up down rotation, actually. So that's why we're using it. I'm just going to copy this and also create a rotate y variable using the x percent. Everything else will stay the same. 
Now, there's a lot of repetition here for this rotation value. So I'm just going to quickly pull it up into a hypoparameter that we can also tune at a later point. So I'll call this card rotation. And let's just set this to be 15. And then here, let me just convert this to a string literal. It'll be card rotation. And this will be negative. And then on this one, it will be the same, but the positive value. And let me just copy this as well for the other rotation value. Okay, so now we have these rotation values. Let's attach it to the div so these actually apply. So I need to go down here and I need to convert this into a motion div first so that I can accept these motion values. We'll import motion and also convert the ending tag. Then on this div, we'll add a style tag and we can pass in simply rotate X and rotate Y. And one other property I'll pass in is transform style and I'll say preserve 3D. This will help just make sure this 3D rotation seems coherent. Okay, let's try it. So now I'm gonna go here, I'll just refresh it, and now let's hover. And we can see, when I go up and down, there's a flip, vertical flip rotation, and then go left and right, there's a horizontal flip rotation. It, it looks all right right now. The transition on the rotation can be a little bit smoother, I think. So we're gonna use a spring animation here to make it look a little bit smoother. So up here, I'll just simply, instead of just setting X and Y percent to just a regular motion value, I'll change this to use spring. Initial value will still be zero, and I'll set the bounce to be zero as well. And let me just copy this for the Y percent. So now if we try this again, when I hover, it looks a lot more smooth and natural now on the rotation. So we got rotation down. Let's go ahead and also add some scaling to the card when we hover over it. So here at the top, I'm just going to create another motion value, call it scale. We'll apply the same use spring configuration, but initial value will be one instead of zero here. I'll just also create another hyperparameter for us to tune. So card scale for now I'll set it to 1.07. Now let's attach this motion value to the div. So we'll just add it down here as scale. Now we need to set the scale value at the appropriate times. So for this, we're going to use the on mouse enter and exit events on this div. So on mouse enter, handle mouse enter, which we'll create in a second, and on mouse leave, handle mouse leave. Let's create these functions up here. So on mouse enter, this will also be a mouse event handler, takes an event. And then let's just create this for the leave as well. So when the mouse enters this div, we want to set the scale property to the new value we had set earlier. So scale.set card scale. And when the mouse leaves, we want it to return to its normal scale value of one. Okay, let's try this. So now when I hover, we get a scale along with the rotation. And when I hover off, it scales back down. Now you'll notice that the rotation is actually preserved when the mouse leaves. So let's fix that and reset the rotation. So in this handle mouse leave function, we'll set the X percent to zero and we'll set the Y percent to zero as well. So now when we try this again, hover, we get the rotation and the scale. And when I move off, it restores with no rotation and the original scale. As a final touch, let's add a little sheen that follows the cursor to make this card feel a bit more alive. So let's go down here and underneath this div as a child, I'm gonna create a div for the sheen. So this will be a self-closing div. And let's add a few styles here. So I'll give it a position of absolute, Z of 10. For now, let's set the opacity to 30, rounded, full, and a blur of medium. And then I'm gonna add a style tag here. And for right now, I'm just gonna add a background. Now I'm gonna paste in a radial gradient here, which will give this sheen effect. So I'm also gonna, for now, give it a left and for now, just zero top of zero. I need to also give it a height and a width. And again, I'm gonna set this as a hyperparameter. We can tune later if we want. So I'll call it sheen size. And let's just set this to 500 for now. And then down here, I'm just gonna set the height and width to sheen size. Okay, let's see how this looks. All right, so I hit save. 
It's a little bit tricky right now to see it. If I set this to 100% opacity, we can see very much where this is coming from. Now you'll notice the position right now is kind of weird. This is because the left and top, remember, is where the top left of the sheen object is. So it's starting here, but remember because it's a radial gradient, it'll be most visible at the center of its position, which is because it's sized 500 by 500, the center is actually somewhere out here, which is where you see this white coming through. So let's just set this back to lower opacity. Now, the other thing I'm going to do here quickly is we only want the sheen to show up when we're hovering over the card. So already up here, you'll notice on this overall div, I have set a group property here from Tailwind, which means I can use the group hover property on this sheen object. So here I'll say when we are hovering over the group, in this case, the div, I'll set the opacity to 30%. And actually, otherwise, I want the opacity to be zero, so not visible. I also will give a transition of opacity and a duration of 200 so it doesn't just pop in. So now if we try it one more time, when I hover, you can see the sheen shows up still in that same position, but then when I hover off, it disappears. Now let's actually get the sheen to follow the cursor as it moves around. So we're going to need to track the exact pixel position of the cursor as it moves around. So we'll create more motion values up here to store. So we'll create mouse X, which will use the same initialization as up here. And we'll also create a mouse Y. Now we need to update these as the cursor moves around. So let's go down to handle mouse move. And down here, I'll say mouse X dot set the current mouse X and mouse Y will set the current mouse Y. Now we'll need to do a transformation here to set the position of the sheen, because by default, remember the mouse X and mouse Y is where the cursor is. And we actually want the cursor to be at the middle of the sheen. So we need to transform it and shift it based on the sheen size. So up here, we'll create a couple more transforms. So first we'll say sheen X is use transform and we'll pass a function here and we'll say mouse X dot get take the current X position minus sheen size over two. And then sheen Y will be mouse Y dot get adjusted for the size of the sheen. So this will give us what the top left position of the sheen object should be based on where the cursor is at any given time. And then down here, we can just pass these in instead of left and top of zero, we'll change to sheen of X and sheen Y. Now there's an error here. It won't take motion value, and that's because we need to make this a motion div for it to accept it. All right, so let's try this. So I'm going to refresh, I'm going to hover, and now we see the sheen is moving along with the cursor. Now, we'll see if I hover off of it. Okay, so the sheen is here in the top left on the hover. And when I come from the bottom, let's say, there's a brief moment where the sheen is up at the top still, and it shifts down smoothly. And this is because of the use spring we're actually using here, it's animating from its last known position, which is the top left to the new position in the bottom, let's say, when we enter the card again. So to fix this, in the handle mouse enter, we're going to explicitly tell these motion values to jump to their new positions instead of animate. So for this, we're gonna to need to grab the current mouse position. So current mouse X and current mouse Y from the get mouse position function we had earlier. And then here I'm going to say mouse x dot jump the current x value and mouse y will jump the current y value. So now if we try this again, hover, we have the sheen moving around. I come off of it. If I come from the bottom. Okay, the sheen's already there when I'm hovering. So that's what we have for this video. Drop any questions you have in the comments. Like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And on screen now is another video for you to check out. And I'll see you in the next one.